What's up, fellas? In this video, we're going to look at the problems associated with oil preheat systems and vaporizer coils and why I don't sell air compressor free oil burners. All of my systems tend to use an air compressor, and we're going to examine the reason why I would make a decision like that. Not to mention that um, most oil nozzles will be clogged up by waste oil. So you can't use an atomizing nozzle on most waste oils, even after they're filtered, because of the hairy fibers that still end up getting through somehow. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. We'll be seeing some more of this machine and a different approach to this problem. I'm doing some testing on a compressor-free waste oil burner today. Basically, I've had a lot of people request this specific design. Um, one of the problems with them is, is that they foul up so quickly. Um, they tend not to run hot enough to clean themselves and there's some other problems involved well today i'm going to try a design that i've had sitting on the back burner for quite a while uh, a lot of you have seen my vaporizer coil video where i have a coil like this inside the flame itself well the testing i did was to determine the varnish buildup rate inside one of these tubes and it turns out it's pretty quick a single video yod uh, yielded notable varnishing inside the line here but basically it comes down to this um, these ideas just typically don't work on long haul endurance runs yeah you can make a cool video out of stuff like this and deceive people into believing that they're onto something but in reality you get this thing running 25 hours later this entire coil is clogged up completely useless then you got to pay a guy to clean this thing out so that's just not practical so we're going to try and come up with a solution to that problem and make a coil that's just long enough to where when the oil comes out of this tube, it's only at about 300 degrees. We don't want this oil boiling hot per se, so the size of the coil is very important. So we're going to establish a benchmark today, or tomorrow I should say. For the most part today, I want to look into the spray patterns of the fuel. I'll kind of give you a quick look at what's inside the back of this thing. This is an air preheat chamber right here. Well, if you hear anybody to down to who he is, if you hear someone denigrating solid tarsus, poly apostle, you're looking at an antichrist. You're dealing with an apostate. You're dealing with an unbeliever, a heathen, because the apostle Paul wrote half of the New Testament. All right, fellas, this is the first vaporizer coil I ever tested, and it did not fare well. It's just not a durable configuration at all. This here is a waste oil burner that has probably had about, at the maximum, 15 gallons of oil burnt through it. And the last time I built one of these waste oil burners, I cut inside of it to remove some of the metal that I needed for another project, and I noticed a huge amount of buildup inside of this thing. So for anyone who ever planned on using one of these, for Okay, I ran out of data there, so I don't know if any of that last footage took. But um, this is under 20 gallons of waste oil. You can see the vaporization coil is insulated heavily by buildup.
almost like a good wrap from a hammer while it's running my to clean up our coil. So, not too much longer before this thing's just so insulated with gunk that it wouldn't even matter. There it is. The varnish that I almost knew was present. I had a hunch that this was happening. And for the amount that I've set through this thing, that's quite a bit. I see why they call it varnish now, or varnishing, because it is somewhat similar to like varnish you'd see on a table in consistency. It's cracky and flaky. So yeah, this puppy was varnishing up pretty good. I wonder what it looks like before I get to vibrate it to death. Thing. This stuff definitely would have clogged up the nozzle, the spray nozzle that I initially had on there. It was a very dumb idea of retrospect. This stuff does flake off fairly. So, so basically what we're going to do is get a visual perspective of what different fuel rates actually look like. We're going to use water for this simulation. And we're going to turn the blower on. So I get a bit of a look at what happens to the fuel inside this combustion chamber before we ever even burn any of it. I want to see its flow pattern. So we're going to take a look at that and I'm going to turn this thing on and uh, we'll see what it does. That right there is about 120 kilowatts of power. Here's just a quick little ledger I've made up. That's 161 horsepower. So if you were driving your car down the road and you were flooring it, well actually I take that back. That's about half throttle on my car if that. I got about 330 horsepower, so. But at any rate, that's what that looks like. So let's turn the blower on now and see what that looks like at different settings. Now a lot of you are gonna ask me why I'm not putting some kind of atomizing nozzle on here. Well, this thing needs to be able to burn the dirtiest of dirty oils. And even filtered waste oil still ends up with this just mucking it somehow. So it's just not good to do. In my experience, it, it builds a very unreliable machine. And also look at the power draw we're getting here to run this thing. That's typical with these blower setups. So you're not saving a lot of electricity. People think a compressor is wearing out and that it's drawing too much power, but really you're not wearing out any more than you are running one of these blowers. The brushes don't last forever on these things. They really don't and um, they draw a huge amount of power for performance that really can't be matched by the air compressor configuration. All right, fellas, so I can see right away that I didn't like that at all. We're basically gonna end up with a buildup point right there on that cold spot. So let's try and drop the fuel pin stock down a little bit lower. Okay, I have a little dropper spout connected now. And I'm hoping to get that oil to fly outward a little bit and get caught in the toroidal vortex. Okay, that's more like it. That might be a little too much. We might throw all of our oil out the front there, huh? Not sure what to think there. Let's really is hard to say. Give this a shot. I almost think I like that spout a little better. Going to 50% power. I don't think that's going to work.
Okay. Now we do have to take into consideration that this stuff's going to be pretty hot when it's coming out of there. And it may behave far differently. I did notice that this little ridge and the metal I fabricated this out of is causing a little safe haven right here. Like the air is kind of slipstreaming over the top of it. And it's not spreading that fuel out the way I would like to see it. It's definitely... It's definitely lacking in cyclone performance. Um, it would definitely be ideal to have the cyclone facing directly in the side. Wanted to try this little air box out. I think maybe it should have been a little bit thinner. And I could definitely use some more ducts. But for the most part, I'm not really too confident in this thing's longevity. We're just going to have to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pump about 50 gallons of oil through this thing. And then we're going to take it apart and check it out. The reason this thing was built the way it is, it was designed for easy fabrication. What's the quickest way we could do this was what I had in mind so I could sell it to the customer as cheap as possible. It's kind of expensive going this route. You're basically buying the air compressor too on this version. So not going to save any money going this route for sure the air compressor burners definitely have their place in this world not to mention we have not yet seen this thing's track endurance it may not be able to stand up to the sands of time if you have to clean it out every week it's not what i would call a practical application